Dear friends, dear colleagues, welcome back on the Kinematic Alignment channel. So today I would like to explain you why performing a kinematically aligned tibial cut is safe. My name is Charles Rivier, I'm a hip and knee consultant surgeon working between Bordeaux, London, part of the Imperial College London MSK Lab. So uh, you know there are uh, two main techniques to implant uni implant either the kinematic aligned technique or the mechanical alignment technique. For the KA technique, implants are co-aligned on the knee kinematic axis. On the, with the MA technique, implants are aligned alongside the long bone mechanical axis. Same for the total knee replacement. The two main techniques are MA and KA. So the first principle of the kinematic alignment technique is that implants are aligned on the knee kinematic axis. The second principle of the care technique is that the amount of bone and cartilage removed equals the thickness of the implant. This is how it translates into radiograph. You see how the implants are aligned either on the knee kinematic axis when it is a care technique or on the long bone mechanical axis when it is an MA technique. There are many benefits of to, uh, performing a kinematically aligned uh, tibial cut. It is bone preserving, so on the tibial side, this is only for the UK component. Performing a K tibial cut is key, obviously, to perform physiological implantation, in other words, kinematically aligned implantation. So the loading of the tibial bone is more physiological. A K implantation and able to reduce the shear stress on the bone tibial implant fixation interface. It is the conversion of uni to a total knee. And last, only for the TK, kinematically aligned tibial cut enable a better penetration of the cement in the cancellous bone because when you do the K cut, you remove the sclerotic bone on the degenerative side compartment of the knee. So every time you've got a good quality of spongious bone, which is adequate to, for the cement to penetrate into. Nevertheless, when you perform a kinematically aligned tibia cut, most of the time the cut will be varus aligned. And this scares many of our orthopedic community. So the question is, does reproducing the physiological tibia varus is bad or not. And the goal of this presentation is to show you why you should not be concerned by doing so. You should not be concerned for three reasons. The first one is because the kinematic line cut enable is biomechanically uh, sound friendly because it reduces the shear stress on the bone uh, tibial implant fixation interface. It reduces the risk of uh, edge loading. I will develop this further uh, later because RSA study showed that implant migration, so obviously KA implant migration is low and absolutely acceptable. And last, a clinical study have shown that the long-term implant loosening, so tibial implant loosening is exceptional. There are a lot of evidence that we are going to go through this. So ASADA, when assessing kinematically aligned uni, medial uni, show that the implants end up parallel to the ground when standing. G, Matsumoto, and Hutt, Jonathan Hutt, show the same when a total knee replacement is kinematically aligned. If the implant is more parallel to the ground, then there is less shear stress on the bone tibial implant fixation interface. The fixation, so the cement, is mainly stressed into compression, and we know that the cement is good to sustain compression load. Regarding the risk of edge loading, performing a kinematic implantation is able to reduce this edge loading. On the right side, you can see image of a uni, mechanically aligned uni. Implants are not perpendicular one to another. This favorable risk of edge loading, mainly if you have a, a fixed polyethylene liner, this would increase the risk of accelerated polyethylene wear. If you have a mobile bearing, this increases the risk of bile liner instability. 
This is when the uni is kinematically aligned, implant remains perpendicular one to another with reduced risk of edge loading. Regarding total knee replacement, Co, Nicole Peterson, and Stephen Howell all show that when the total knee is kinematically aligned, there is less risk of edge loading. We know that edge loading is terrible regarding in a biomechanical point of view. It concentrates the stress on a small surface area, which is uh, obviously biomechanically deleterious and would affect our prosthetic components. RSA study have shown that K tibia implant migration is low at two years follow-up, meaning that the implant fixation is likely to last a long time. So Soavi, Ancini, Barbadoro have shown that the implant migration was very low for the uni, the KA uni. On this graph, you can see on the left side, you can see that the various values of the frontal orientation of the tibia components, it varies from 10 degree various to two degree values. And you can see that most of the implant, except one, the migration at two years is absolutely acceptable. Only one implant, the red arrow, has abnormal you know, migration at two years, this implant was implanted with a 10 degree virus, which is definitely excessive. Lion Day, Mike and Dunbar shows the same for total knee replacement. Acceptable implant migration of KA tibial implant at two years follow up. Clinical study, long term implant loosening, so long term tibial implant loosening is exceptional. Okay, so regarding the KA UK, Look, look where, out of 65 KA uni at 13 years, follow up at no tibia loosening. 94% survival of implants. Reddish, out of 192 KA UK, had at 10 years only one tibia loosening and 94.6% and implant survival. Heise, 52 uni. And the indication of the uni was a spunk. At 15 years, only three tibia loosening, 91% implant survival. Heise, again, 223 K UK. On, so at the time of surgery, all patients were below 60 years old, so young active patient. At 15 years follow up, only three tibia loosening, 86% implant survival. This is Kaplan-Meyer uh, uh, graph illustration, so excellent survivorship of KA UK over the long term. Stephen Howell shows the same for the KA TKA, 204 consecutive and unselected KA TKA, 10 years follow up, only one tibial loosening, 98.5% survival, implant survival. And this is the Kaplan-Meyer curve. So, I've shown you that there are little concern about performing a, a KA tibial cut, but obviously, I would recommend everyone to be reasonable. Let's not reproduce a cut with a 10 degree virus, and let's apply some alignment limits. So, by the time we define, you know, which knee anatomy is suitable for pure K or not, please apply some limit. We developed years ago classification, the PAS, or Personal Arthroplasty Society classification, whatever, of the complex cases, the knee anatomy that, uh, that are a challenge when performing a K implantation. So the type one is when patient has a severe constitutional virus. Type two is when there is a severe constitutional valgus. The so type two A is when the collateral ligament are functional, right? And the three is when there is a significant joint line obliquity. So for those type one, two A and three, which are extreme anatomy, it is maybe sound to apply some limit of alignment. So Pascal Andre Van Italy developed more than 10 years ago the Montreal Protocol, or name as well, a restricted kinematic alignment protocol or Montreal Protocol anyway, with a HK limit at three and MHPTA or IDFA anyway at five degree. We are all working throughout the world 
on defining which are those limits. Maybe those limits are a little bit restrictive. Maybe we can expand them. And, uh, but it is sound to apply the limit by waiting for uh, additional evidence. So the past classification may also be applied for uni. Um, so there are some evidence showing that type one and two are likely not a, a problem for the uni. The evidence comes from mainly the mobile bearing Oxford group showing that constitutional limb alignment is not much a problem for the long-term survivorship of the Oxford. Anyway, so, and for the type three, with the severe John Lennon regusie, there is no research. There is no data, as far as I know, uh, regarding this. So maybe it is sound to apply some limits. So when implanting uh, KAUK on the medial side, well, let's limit the uh, various obliquity of the tibial implant to five degree, which when looking at the RSA study I've mentioned before, appear to be a safe uh, limit of alignment. So guys, my take home messages are a KA tibial implant okay, is safe and is likely beneficial for all the reasons I've mentioned. And a KA implantation is for everyone because if you face a patient with an extreme anatomy, then you can apply some restriction. So you still do a kinematic implantation, but with some restriction, and this is a restricted kinematic implantation. And for this, you will need some technology, technological access assistance. So much more to come on personalized arthroplasty. So an open uh, a book will be an open access and uh, available mid-June. The Personalized Arthroplasty Society, you can become a member. This is free of charge. Go on the website, on the member section, and go on to the open membership. You, uh, a platform to discuss clinical cases. This is accessible throughout through uh, the PASS website. And of course, the YouTube and ViewMedi PASS channel. Et voilà. So guys, I hope you, uh, you enjoy this talk. Thank you for listening, and see you on the next video. Bye-bye.